Hey, what's up? This is Václav. Just a quick update on Zigbee. I have these uh, Tardify remotes that I got from Ikea. I think I got one of them in a package with the smart outlet. And I thought they would be great to trigger different things around the house. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to configure them in my Zigbee network. Until recently, that is. They can pair with different lights and I even managed to add them to the network, but they didn't work. After some struggle, I found a couple of things. Most importantly, I had to upgrade the firmware on my CC2531 controller, which is not straightforward. The standard way requires you to buy a CC debugger and a downloader cable. It will cost you over 10 bucks, which is more than the actual controller. And it makes no sense because you're going to only use it once and then throw it away. And it would take time to deliver. But if you have Raspberry Pi and you know how, it's relatively easy and I will show that to you. But before that, I have learned a few things whilst I was trying to solve it that I'd like to discuss. First, one of the things I have done is I have changed from ZHA to ZigBee to MQTT. I had to add all the devices to the network again, which was quite a hassle and it didn't solve the issue, but everything works fine at the end. So I can compare the two now, I guess. They both work, which is important. I somehow like the Zigbee to MQTT admin page better, but I had a feeling that the ZHA responded a bit faster, but I didn't measure it. So maybe it's just a feeling. Overall, both work fine, at least for the devices I have. I had a feeling that adding new devices through Zigbee to MQTT was easier, but that's maybe related to the next thing. That coder mentioned that you do not have to move devices close to the controller to pair them. And indeed, he was right. I did mix up two things. Zigbee has a feature called TouchLink that allows to communicate with physically closed devices without being on the same network. So if you have a device that you cannot manually factory reset, you can bring the device close to the controller, open the TouchLink feature and start scanning. You should find the device, reset it and add it to the network. This works in Zigbee to MQTT. But if you can reset the device or switch it to the pairing mode, then you don't have to be close to the controller at all. So that is great. And the third thing is I have learned that uh, when adding some battery powered devices, like the switches, it might be a good idea to keep them awake during the interview process by clicking the button. The way it works is the device is first announced and then it's configured. And if it goes to sleep in the middle, you might end up with an unknown device. With that out of the way, let me show you how I fixed the issue with the remote. I managed to add them both to ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT, but they didn't work. When I pressed the button, it didn't show any trigger, any event. It didn't change the state. There was no message in the logs. And in the automations, the device didn't show the on, off and brightness up and down actions. After some searching, I figured it's due to an old firmware version on the C2531 controller. I did ships them with the default ZStack version 1.2 from Ken Canters, who is the author of the Zigbee to MQTT. It supports both Zigbee to MQTT and ZHA, but it's a version 2018-0507 that apparently has some issues with the remote. The newest 1.2 version is 2019-0608 and it works fine. There is also a version for Zigbee 3.0 but that's an experimental and it's not compatible and there are some limitations so I didn't try that. You can download the firmware from Kern's uh, GitHub page, the link is in the description. Go to the ZStack Home 1.2 bin and default and download the CC2531 zip file. But if you think you can just plug the controller into PC and upload the firmware, then no. For that, you have to have the CC debugger and connect it to the debug port on the controller. Or you can do that from Raspberry Pi, and I'm including the link to the instructions in the description. For that, you need four jumper wires, Unfortunately, the connector in CC2531 is too small and the jumper wires will not fit in. So what I did is I temporarily soldered them to the pins. 
When you do that, just make sure you connect it only to the correct pin because there is not uh, plenty of space. Then you plug them in the Raspberry Pi based on the diagram and uh, you plug the controller into the Raspberry USB port and boot it. Then connect to the Pi. First, we'll download the CC2531 flasher from GitHub. And to do that, you need to install Git first. So run sudo apt update, then sudo apt install git. Now we can get the cc2531 flasher. Run git clone and the URL of the flasher. Copy that from the description. Then go to the flash cc2531 directory. To make it easier, copy the firmware there. There are two files and you need the hex one. Now let's check if the controller is connected. Type cc chip ID and it should respond ID equals B524. If you get zeros, then you didn't connect it properly. Next, clear the flash with cc erase. And finally, upload the firmware with the command cc write and the name of the hex file. It'll take about three minutes. After that, turn the Pi off, disconnect the virus, plug it back to Home Assistant, et voila! The remotes will start registering the actions. There is no need to re-register them to the Zigbee network, they should work fine. For the simple remotes, I just use automations created straight from the MQTT integration page. In the bedroom, I have the IKEA 1624 G4 bulbs that can change the color. And I control them with this uh, IKEA E1810 remote. To make it easier, I use a Control X app daemon script that is available through the Home Assistant Community Store. And with that, that's it for today. I hope you find it useful and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.